Welcome, welcome to the Rick Helps Real Estate Show, where we talk about Arizona real estate and try to make sense of this crazy market. And today we're going to talk about short-term rentals. The Airbnb and VRBO business in the Phoenix Valley in Arizona in general is huge. They're everywhere, but not without problems. There are problems with noise and parking and trash and uh, everywhere, especially Scottsdale. Uh, some of the Airbnbs have gotten out of control. So if you're looking forward to spring training, golf, and the Super Bowl coming up in January, Now's the time to be aware of the regulations by city that are starting to show up fast and furious. In 2016, the governor said that cities were not going to be allowed to restrict short-term rentals. Uh, then they came back and said, well, we may need to let them put in some regulations because they were just going willy-nilly without any repercussions for the noise and the problems that they were having. Especially in Scottsdale, what was happening was the bars would close at 2 a.m. and the party would just continue over to the short-term rental. And the streets that were quiet, and you're living across from the school, are now full of cars, people partying till the sun comes up. And there was nothing anybody could do about it. So now cities are coming in and they're allowed to regulate. And there are some things that you need to pay attention to. One of them is, if you just look here, and this is a state law, uh, they're saying the requirements are for operators to have local licenses, permits, contact information, and proof of compliance with tax and other laws and regulations. So right out of the bat, the very first one, uh, you have to have your ducks in a row. <clears throat> you now have to have a permit. Now, the city of Mesa just passed uh, an ordinance last night. I don't think it was last night, but they recently passed a, an ordinance that said that you're going to have to get a yearly permit and it's going to cost about $250. So you have to register that home as a short-term rental. Now with that, you have to provide your contact information to the city so they can provide it to the police. So if there's a problem, they know who to get a hold of because that's been the problem with the short-term rentals. Nobody knows who to call. Now the other requirement that they put in, I don't know how they're going to enforce this, but you're required to notify your neighbors that your home is a short-term rental. Now, I don't know what the official method is going to be. Are you supposed to knock on their door? How do you prove that you notified your neighbors? Do you have to send it certified mail? And how many neighbors? Do you, if you have 14 homes on the, on the street, do you have to notify all 14 of them? So I think that's they're putting that, that requirement in there, but I don't know how they're going to enforce that. So I'm going to be kind of watching that and see what they do. But a lot of cities now, including... Scottsdale and Sedona and Flagstaff are saying just that. You need to notify your neighbors. I don't know how they're going to do it. Requirements to provide contact and other information for nearby single-family residential properties. You're supposed to let your neighbors know how to contact you. New fines for violations and a three-strike rule for suspension of permit if a rental has three or more health and safety violations in a 12-month span. So you can really get... Uh, you can just lose your Airbnb license altogether. And uh, you got to be aware of the, the tax consequences as well. So some of the Arizona tax law here for short-term rentals, um, they have uh, all income received in conjunction with the rental of the property is considered taxable income. The bigger question that should be asked is, is the income you're receiving refundable? If it's refundable, it isn't going to be reported until it is no longer refundable. Any revenue received is subject to tax unless there's an exemption for it. Therefore, fees charged for items such as security deposits, cancellation fees, and housekeeping are considered taxable gross income at the time the fee is no longer refundable to the renter. So like everything else in city governments and state governments, taxation becomes complicated. You have to pay a transaction privilege tax, TPC. And so you have to settle up with them at the end of the year with that. Now, as <clears throat> discussed earlier, Mesa becomes the, uh, move my mug here, the latest city to regulate short-term rentals. And you can see this is a picture, I think, that illustrates the problem quite well. Look at all the people on in this house. 
So Mesa is saying that they're going to require compliance with city codes, zoning, tax, noise, health and safety, like everything we just covered just a moment ago, require emergency contact information, requires notifying neighbors that the property be used as short-term rental. Again, they're requiring that, but they haven't laid out how you're supposed to do that. So stay close to that if you have an Airbnb. Ask that question. What's the method? How am I supposed to notify my neighbors? Establishes minimum liability insurance requirements. This is a new one. They want $500,000 in minimum liability. So that is a new one. You're going to have to prove that, that you have that. And of course, uses per statute, including housing sex offenders, sober living homes, selling liquor, or illegal drugs, obscenity, pornography, adult-oriented business, special events, and retail. Defines grounds and processes for denial and suspension of license and establishes civil penalties against owners and others. So you're going to be watched. And it's really not that complicated. Just make sure you're in compliance and make sure that you're the people that are renting know that they need to behave and uh, and you you should be just just fine where you can get into trouble is not registering and not having the insurance now the other thing that comes up a lot is can HOAs regulate your short-term rental unless it's in the CCNRs they can't so they can't just decide that Oh, we're going to regulate this short-term rental here in this in this uh, HOA. It's going to have to be in the original CCNRs. Now they can adopt new rules and regulations for their CCNRs. They can hold a meeting. They can have a vote, and they can rewrite it. That's great. But if it's not in there, then uh, then they can't enforce anything. So this is where the cities are coming in and saying, "Well, however we can," and we're going to try and quiet things down. Now Sedona has taken, I think, a very unusual approach. They're doing the same thing. You have to register. You have to make sure that you've uh, provided your contact information. But they're offering you $10,000 to use it as a long-term rental. I don't think $10,000 is going to wag anybody's tail because you're going to make far more than that as a short-term rental. The other problem that they're having in Sedona right now is saturation. There's like 1,000 short-term rentals up there when there's really only 6,000 single-family residences. So one in six is a short-term rental. Um, and now there's so many that the people that own the Airbnbs are having a hard time getting getting them booked. So are they going to start selling their homes? Um, I don't know. One of the things that we're seeing here, people trying to sell their homes in Arizona right now, is this high cancellation rate. You can see here we're at 11,040 for the year so far. We only had 8,167 cancel in all of last year. So people that are trying to sell their homes are finding out that they can't. And so they say, well, I'm going to take it off the market and cancel. They go back to either turning it into a rental or they decide they're going to still keep living there or they're going to keep it as a short-term rental. So when you are getting ready now for the Super Bowl, make sure you stay on top of your local city ordinance so that you don't get in trouble. Best of luck. Take on the rest of the week. Take care.